So Alibaba investors are once again rejoicing with a momentous 8% rally last Friday, closing right above the $90 psychological mark. So let's attempt to answer the biggest question of this entire century. Is Alibaba finally going to the moon? So I think before we even try to answer this question, um, let's not jump the gun and let's look at the price action of Alibaba thus far. So for those of you who have been following the stock, um, like myself for close to two years or more than two years now, from its peak, Baba is actually trading above $300. And today, it closed at a measly $90.55. So that's close to a 60 to 70% drawdown from its peak. And if you were to really observe, just based on the start of 2022, they've essentially been trading in this band. Um, if I would say around 80 to around $120. So it has been touching this band for at least a good three to four times. And likewise, in many other occasions, when Baba was trading around 70 to 80, it bounced back up, it went back down, it, it bounced back up, and then it went back down again. So this time around, why would it not be a fake out and go up again? So personally, I'm not a technical chart expert, but what I can do is to really superimpose many of these news headlines, articles, and developments around China and Alibaba by and large, um, to really let you understand in some of these um, great deeps and great recovery, what actually transpired. So in late 2021, um, Alibaba in its recent earnings report actually slashes guidance and earnings because of the China slowdown. And as you all know, back then, um, they were still in this entire lockdown phase and consumer sentiments were at an all-time low, um, the property crisis were unraveling, and that was also why um, it had a direct hit on both top-line and bottom-line impact on many of these tech companies, um, Alibaba included. On 9th of March, um, the US Security and Exchange Commission actually called out five Chinese companies at the risk of being delisted, selling off an earthquake among Chinese concept stocks. And many of these internet tech companies actually fell 10 to 20%. And you can essentially see this gap down. And I think this largely plagues many of these um, US listed Chinese stocks um, like JD.com, Pintuoto, Alibaba, even for Tencent, which is over the counter. So back then, I think they were still trying to iron out some of the intricacies of the discussion points, but sent down representative to Hong Kong. Um, I think they kind of passed the initial um, first audit check, but they still did identify deficiencies. And we are still keeping our eyes peeled on what exactly will transpire from this entire episode. Next up in this uh, very short rally, um, Alibaba actually surges more than 11% after them announcing a share buyback program of 25 billion. So of course, we can never forget when Alibaba actually visited um, the lows of under $60 a share. And that was when um, CCP had their Congress and um, they were essentially saying that uh, many of the news headlines were propagating the idea that China won't be the capitalist world's low cost labor hub anymore. Um, and they're moving towards socialism and communism, etc., etc. And right after that, we had a humongous rally out into early of 2023 because China actually did say that um, they're gonna reopen and you talk about um, coming out of zero COVID, everybody was playing onto the entire revenge spending narrative. And evidently, um, due to the many various data points that came out from China in the last few months, many of the retail spending actually did disappoint many investors, which kind of explained um, this sell down. And thereafter, uh, moving forward, uh, fast forward a few months later, Alibaba Group did say that they're gonna have some sort of um, huge revamp in terms of the organizational structure, and they're gonna break up um, the entire group into six different parts. And there was this short-lived rally, which didn't last long. And right now, just this last week, um, China actually hit Alibaba affiliate and group with a $985 million fine. And um, what does this mean for investors? So I think largely speaking, when you really superimpose many of this news development over um, Alibaba share price, you can really see how uh, many of this narrative or story um, that is building around the stock and how the price is reacting accordingly. So I believe that I've been talking to a few friends about investing in this entire Chinese concept stocks or Chinese recovery or Chinese consumption stocks. And many of them back then were saying that, oh, China was still in the lockdown. There was still zero COVID. There was still this entire regulatory pressures, etc., etc. The climate wasn't good, which is why many of them set out of this entire bear market, which is kudos to them. But circling back to the main point, I think just recently, there's been many um, posturing and there are many news development around um, how they already came off um, zero COVID. Uh, regulation seems to be slowing down. Um, even the main central authorities are talking about trying to woo back uh, many of this foreign capital. 
And I'm just wondering the same folks out there, there and then, um, that was talking about many of these issues, are they interested again in many of these Chinese concept stocks? Or are they scarred by this huge bear market drawdown? So for the investors who already have the intention to buy into many of these different Chinese companies, um, I would just like to ask, uh, when would be the trigger point or have you already triggered? So for those of you who have actually triggered your buy button, um, I would like to give you a standing ovation. Uh, but I'll spare you um, the hassle because I wouldn't stand up right now. Uh, I'm probably not wearing pants because I lost my pants um, in the last two years when holding many of these Chinese concept stocks. But I think for the other group of people who have the intentions of buying many of these companies, yet at the same time still continuing to wait on the sidelines, can I just ask um, at what point in time would you actually pull the trigger? I'm genuinely curious. So that's that. Now, I think to speak up for this other group of investors who are extremely hesitant to pull the trigger, I can understand why. Because this is essentially like the story um, around the boy who cry wolf. So this is actually not the first time um, where we see positive developments. And I like to put it in air quotes, positive developments. Whether is it rumor or whether is it true that um, the end group regulatory pressure um, has been lifted from Alibaba. So you can see the timestamp of many of these tweets that I've tweeted out. This was in real time. So back in 9th of June, 2022, um, that's more than a year now, we can essentially see that the trading activity and speculation with this stock is just beyond comprehension. We are talking about a 10% movement on the $320 billion market cap. And if I'm not wrong, um, this was based on the news that um, the end regulation was coming to an end, and it was rumored that end might go IPO again. And this was at the start of the year on January 4th, where Baba is essentially starting the year really strong. And this is on the idea that Alibaba jumps 7% in Hong Kong as Ant's consumer finance company actually wins approval for its capital plan from the Chongqing's banking and insurance regulator. So this is really not the first time where we see positive developments. And time and time again, if I can refer you back to how um, Alibaba's chart pattern is, you can see that there is always a short momentous rally um, where investors get excited, investor sentiments are pumped up again, and then we are back to square one where Alibaba just trades downwards um, around the $80 um, psychological support again. So now, will this time be different? Um, I did float the idea back then that I would like to reiterate that I think we've seen the bottom in October of 2022, not barring any black swan. So I've made a video on 28th of November 2022. So back then, um, it's really the entire story building around how China is no longer capitalistic, it's going back to its communism roots, etc. And um, yeah, basically your news outlets is running that narrative 24-7, which was why investor sentiments was at an all-time low, around $60. So I do still hold that opinion um, that we are not going to visit the bottom in October of 2022. But that said, um, Alibaba hasn't been treating investors kind enough. Um, it has tr tried to break, break out of 120, break out of 100, break out of 90, 95, but it failed to do so. So now, I think this was a very interesting investor sentiments um, back then in October of 2022 as well. So nothing makes sense anymore. So this was one of the tweets that I retweeted back then. Chinese stock investors in 2015, reading Buffett and Munger because the issue is fundamentals. And back then in 15 and 16, um, 2015, 2016, um, China was essentially in a bubble-like territory. That's why there was a huge collapse if you were to follow the Chinese market back then. So fast forward to 2020, Chinese stock investors in 2020, reading economics because the issue is macro, because of your slowdown, your lockdown, um, Chinese capitalistic policy, etc, etc. And Chinese stock investors in 2022, reading history because nothing makes sense anymore. And I completely agree. Now, let's circle back to the main topic of this entire discussion. So why is this particular end find significant? So th there was this very interesting observation that my friend made. So he was saying that, hey, um, if you still remember back then when Alibaba announced the breakup, I think they wanted to break up into six pieces. And right after the announcement, Alibaba was up um, 6% in the pre-market. So they were saying, the more pieces you break the business, the stronger the rally. And right now, it's the same thing. And when the Chinese regulators actually um, announced the official fine of around 0.98 billion against N Group, um, does it mean that the more the fine, the higher the stock goes? So this is definitely just for fun. But I think according to this tweet, many people are under the assumption that, oh, because Chinese regulators actually announced a smaller than anticipated fine. So that's why um, Alibaba rallied by 8%. But personally, I actually disagree. Um, to me, I think that this fine or, or the significance of this fine is really the symbolic meaning of what it means. 
Um, essentially, um, the entire tech crackdown or the tech episode or the entire bear market around many of these Chinese tech companies was really triggered by N Group. So in similar vein, um, N Group should kind of mark the end of this entire crackdown. So after allowing them to go for capital financing, after finding them and all these many other things that they're doing, um, it does signal to many of these capital markets investors that, hey, um, we might really be at the end um, rather than based on many speculations or rumors because this is directly out from many of these Chinese regulators and authorities. I think one silent fact at the background that is transpiring that not many people have been following is really the idea of many of these Chinese companies buying back their shares aggressively and to kind of benefit shareholders and to unlock shareholders' value. So N Group's valuation actually falls to around 78 billion, down by some 40%. And N Group is saying that it's going to use its own funds to repurchase no more than 7.6 of the company's share. And similarly, for Alibaba Group, in their latest quarterly report, they also said that they have already bought back around 1.9 billion shares and they have approximately 19.4 billion remaining under the current authorization. And if you do just do a quick Google search, um, Baba's market cap now is around $230 billion. So that's around uh, 10%, 8 to 10% wipeout in terms of uh, outstanding shares. And directly as an owner or directly as a shareholder, you are benefiting. Of course, let's not go into the shenanigans of whether you own the real shares or not. But back to the idea of um, the CCP cracking down on many of these companies, um, not being capitalistic, not allowing them to reward shareholders. I think uh, based on the actions of many of these companies um, thus far, um, it doesn't seem like it. And more importantly, we have to triangulate this data with other tech companies as well. Um, like I said, um, N Group kind of sets the stage and context for to, to kind of show more color in terms of what the regulators are thinking back in China today. And Tencent on that same day, 7th of July of 2023, have released a voluntary announcement. And I think just on this highlighted um, sentence over here, the company actually believes that the financial regulators will focus on normalized regulation going forward. Um, implementing financial policies and measures to promote the healthy development of the platform economy. And I guess um, this is kind of the sentiments that is driving um, investor sentiments back up again. Now, I think last but not least, many people have been complaining that, oh, you're stuck in Baba for quite some time now. Um, I've been losing a lot of money, um, paper losses, opportunity costs, etc., etc. A manga, based on the Daily Journal's report, 13 F Falling, just recently, he has not sold out his Alibaba shares, despite calling it his biggest mistake. So you infer from his own actions. With that, I'll see you in the next video. But more importantly, I'll finally see you on the moon. Goodbye.